Welcome to the Living Artist Podcast. I'm your host, Preston M. Smith. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Living Artist Podcast. I'm Preston M. Smith at PMS Artwork Everywhere on Internet Land and Socials. I want to thank you for landing on this podcast. Whether you're a professional artist, just getting started in the art world, a collector of art, or just consider yourself a creative person, this podcast has something for you. I like to think of it as a fun way to rant and talk to other creative people about living the life of an artist, surviving and getting ahead in the art world, and enjoying your life. But most importantly, not waiting until you're dead to make it happen. All right, let's get started. Welcome back to the show. It's Benny, and here comes your host, PMS Benny. Oh man! Wow, <laughs> I just listened back to that and maxed out all my levels. And yeah, sorry about that. Well, actually, I'm not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. I hope you got a good chuckle out of that, and I hope it lifted your spirits a little bit. I was trying to do a little bit of a juxtaposition to how we're actually going to start the show because, man, I haven't been able to shake this depression for a few weeks now. Uh, I've been doing, you know, I've been going up and down, up and down, creating, feeling good, kind of getting up and getting into the swing of things. I've been telling my wife it's kind of like a steady malaise. It's just not feeling, you know, almost feeling like you're just kind of done with stuff. And I know everybody's feeling some of that, or most people are feeling that right now. There's a lot of prolonged bad news that are that's going on in the world. And I think it's just been affecting me a little bit. But it just reminded me of a time when I was really going through some serious isolation that kind of mirrored this, but I was by myself in Los Angeles, and I was going through some heavy depression, partially because I was drinking every single night and working a shit job uh, at a restaurant that I hated every day just to keep the lights on so I could create. I did this for a better part of a, well, not just a decade, 14 years straight before I kind of climbed out of that funk. But uh, I wrote a book about it called The Blue Period, Nobody's ever read it, so don't feel bad because I never really knew how to market it, but it is here. I have it sitting in my hands as we speak, and it was a very autobiographical fiction about me, my first seven years in Los Angeles, trying to make it as an artist and figure out how to navigate the art world and my own mindset. And I just had a hard time. I had a hard time with finances, I had a hard time with kind of breaking through, I did shows here and there and, you know, I created nonstop and I was able to sell a couple pieces here and there. Uh, this was kind of before the internet started to really allow artists to sell their work on their own. And I was doing gallery shows and I was selling some work here and there to people from shows or from word of mouth or friends, but I wasn't selling nearly enough to get by. And I think it was just one of those things where the weight of that, the weight of like having no prospects or having prospects like thinking, oh, you know, you just get into some gallery shows and you sell your work and then you're going to make it. Well, that didn't happen. I would sell the odd piece here and there. And it was such a far cry from that to making a living that it was just kind of like, well, (laughs) what are you going to do? This is my life, I guess. And anyway, one day I woke up, well, actually rewind a bit. I got kind of sick from probably lifestyle habits and lifestyle choices for a long time and, you know, being depressed, being isolated for so long that I got kind of sick for a while and I had to take my health into my own hands and really just change everything about my life and my diet. And I'm sure you've heard me allude to this at the podcast before, but I was just in this haze. I was like being drunk all the time without any of the fun and Yeah, it just kind of reminded me a little bit of what I've been feeling this week, and I just thought I'd revisit the book. 
because I actually started writing this book wandering around Los Angeles, just feeling depressed, you know, walking the streets with music. And the book was the thing that actually pulled me out of the funk. So creativity literally saved my life because I was pretty depressed and pretty down in a deep, you know, dark place. A lot of people don't know me that way. They know me as this chipper person who is very positive and, well, you know, I had to get there. I had to figure out how to get there on my own and through my creative process. Actually, the foreword of my book is from Friedrich Nietzsche, and it's everyone who has ever built anywhere a new heaven first found the power thereto in his own hell. That is the truth, ladies and gentlemen. So anyway, I just was flipping through the book today, and it's a novel, but kind of punctuated throughout the chapters are some poems. And I thought I would read you one of me just first starting to try to climb out of that depression and sickness that I was experiencing at the time that I I just felt like there was no way out. So I just wanted to read you one poem from that. Here we go. So here I sit, typing in front of the computer, wearing sunglasses, my head pounding somewhere, somewhere deep inside, veins pumping, a slow thump near the back of my eyeballs. They will see us waving from such great heights, playing on the iTunes. And I wonder, will they ever see me waving this way? Maybe a better question is, will they ever see me at all? I have just moved into a new place, out of the old hellhole that was making me ill, physically, mentally. And I'm happier here already, although my head still pounds. Remnants from the old place? A little farewell gift? So why do I miss it? Miss the walls. Miss the children screaming at 8 a.m. Miss the heat trapped inside driving me nuts. I guess it must be the quiet revolution that went on inside this place. And inside of me, in there. So much happened. My solemn sanctuary amidst the clowns. Alone for the first time in five years. And ever since. I guess it all makes sense. This strange nostalgia. Now I sit in front of the same screen with different walls staring me down. And I can breathe a little easier, but not much else is easier. Although this could change. And maybe, just maybe, you will see me waving someday. That's it. I was just flipping through that book, just kind of revisiting some old stuff. Because it's nice to revisit your old creations from time to time. See where you came from. See what you were doing. And man, it just hit, it kind of hit me. I was like, wow, I've come so far. My mindset, my, my physical body, my mentality, I've come so far. I'm so much healthier in so many different ways. I'm so much more positive. I'm so much more successful than I was back then. And yet I know that depression still, like I felt it this week. And yeah, it's good to have the tools to pull yourself out of that. And creativity is a great way to do that. It saved me in the past and it's continuing to save me now. I'm sure a lot of you feel the same way about that. And you know, I just wanted to share because I want to be honest with everybody about what I'm going through, what's going on in the world, what's happening in my mindset. You know, it's easy to be like, yeah, everything's great all the time, but that's not honest, right? Um, For the most part, everything is great and I'm very grateful and I'm very lucky and fortunate to be doing what I'm doing. But yeah, it's all hitting us on different levels. Some people have it much, much, much worse. And I want to be aware and mindful of that. But we're all feeling it. I'm not going to go into any details about things that I've experienced during the pandemic or, you know, things that affect me recently because I don't want to get into a little bit of a pissing contest about grief or being down. But suffice it to say that we're all feeling it right now. And yes, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Looks like we might be pulling out of this in the next few months, question mark. (laughs) I'm Ron Burgundy. Anyway, the point is I started off with a little funny kind of early morning radio talk show bullshit because (laughs) that's how I want to be feeling. I want to be feeling wacky and fun and 
that's how I'm normally feeling. So sometimes forcing yourself to do some stuff like that can really get your body in motion and get you in action. If you're, if somebody out there, if anybody out there is feeling depressed and having a hard time right now, I, I can understand. And I know a lot of us can understand. They keep saying we're all in this together, but you know, it doesn't feel that way sometimes. It feels very isolated. It feels like, are we really in this together? Because I feel like I'm just doing this alone. I know a lot of people feel like they're doing it alone. They're in their room. They're in their studio up against the world or up against time or lack of money, fill in the blank. But we are really are collectively in this together, at least in the collective consciousness. So remember that and take some comfort in that at least. And you know what? You have your creativity. In that way, we're so much luckier than so many other people because our creativity is cathartic and it can pull us out of this. Having said that, it's okay to feel down. It's okay to feel this and to really let it out. You know, if you can't let it out in your creativity, if you're facing a creative block, talk to people, talk to somebody, talk to a friend, talk to yourself, talk to your walls. I've done it. Yeah, you know, reach out to me on social media. All of us artists are kindred spirits. We all can understand how the other person's feeling. It, It resonates. You know, so like I said, reach out to me and share how you're feeling. Hopefully I'll have some time to to get back to you and maybe there's some comfort in that. But other than that, let's just be there for each other. Don't take this out on other people and don't be mean. Be nice to each other and be good to yourself. Do some loving kindness meditation. Watch a stupid movie. My wife and I, I think we've watched more stupid movies than I ever have in my entire life in the past month or two. It's so funny. I mean, I used to consider myself a very, uh, not a critic, but a serious film connoisseur. You know, I always liked the old heady independent films, the dark stuff. I just can't stomach it right now. And that's okay. Your body needs what it needs. So listen to what your body needs and Watch some fucking stupid movies. <laughs> Listen to some upbeat music. Go for a run if you can. Work out inside your apartment if you can. Um, laugh with your friends or if you don't have friends or loved ones in your place physically, do it over Zoom. You know, just open a dialogue about it. Get the stuff out because one thing that doesn't help is shoving it all down. It'll come out in really weird and damaging ways. So, That's it for today. I just wanted to keep it fairly short and send you off for the week, even though you're listening to this probably on a Tuesday or maybe you're not. Maybe you are listening to it on a Friday. And I hope to see you next time. I've got a very good interview coming up. So lots to look forward to. And I've got actually quite a few really good interviews coming up. But I wanted to do a short one just to let you know how I'm feeling and I'm hoping that it resonates with some of you out there that are also feeling the same way. Be well and you guessed it. I'm going to let the intro music play you out. Enjoy. That's all for We'll see you back here next time. This has been the Living Artist Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. I just want you to know that I appreciate you being here and I'm grateful to be in your ears. Your art and creative life on this planet is meaningful, so thank you for sharing it with me. If you like this podcast, whatever platform you're listening to it on, please subscribe and share it with your friends. You can also leave me a positive review to show your support. This helps me to reach more people with the algorithmic magic and keep the show going strong. If you want to see more of what I do and check out the art that I create, you can visit my website at www.pmsartwork.com or follow me on social media everywhere at PMS Artwork. That's it for now. See you back here next time.